My name is Donnie Evers, NFL veteran from the Kansas City Chiefs and San Diego Chargers. For the last 13 years, I've been taking our World War II veterans back to their battlefields to honor them and to give them closure. I'm Aaron Jones, Green Bay Packers running back, and this is Salute to Service Through My Eyes. Do you guys know how lucky, <laughs> lu as, as, as kids, like, do you understand how lucky you guys are? We're not lucky. We're blessed, like, we're truly blessed. Blessed, for sure. We have to make so many sacrifices. During those sacrifices, our parents never stopped giving back. We have no choice but to be great. I mean, the standards have been set. Uh, whatever we, we whatever we voice, what do we want to do? So when we were little, Dad, I want to play in the NBA. I want to play in the NFL. He's like, you sure this is what you want to do? I'm gonna push you towards that. And they've gotten down. They've been that step stool for us to continue to allow us to grow as uh, players, people off the field as well. So I'm glad to have them as my parents. Yeah, we, we went through those patches where Mom would say. Oh, you too tough on them. You too hard on them. And, and, but it ended up being funny because she ended up being worse than me. <laughs> nah, I remember the first time. Mom always had my back. Always had my back. The first time, she's like, "Nah, you need to listen to what your dad said. He was right." <laughs> and I think I went in the back and cried. I think I went in the back and cried. Uh, I just, I just think family is the ultimate. It's, it's not a sport, but ultimate team, you know? You guys may may have your ups and downs, you guys may fight, you may, wh whatever it may be, but you guys know at the end of the day, nobody has my back like these people do. And they're always gonna be there no matter what. You, you already started learning how to be a, a great teammate or whatever it is at home being with being with your family. When I started reading your story and finding out, I was like, man, this is really, really similar to my family. Although I didn't have a father growing up, but my grandfather was that father figure you know, which is pretty special. And, you know, lo and behold, because of my grandfather is the reason why I choose, after I got done playing 14 years in the NFL, to give back to our men and women that wore the uniform. Because it's so important that we understand that we realize that we just play football. You know, only in America, I can get, we can get educated. You know, I got a master's degree from UCLA. I'm the first person in my family that ever graduated from college, let alone get a master's degree because of the, win the men and women that serve, that give us this opportunity. And it was like my grandfather said, you know, he said, uh, you can achieve anything in this country if you work hard. And I never forgot that. I was an athlete growing up, but my, my family situation wasn't stable. My mother, who, who's still living, um, she's a heroin addict. And um, I've never met my father, never seen a picture of him, don't know any of his family, anybody. But I, I was, I like to tell people that I was just as good as my two sons, but I didn't have I didn't have the family support. I didn't have the support to push me to keep me on the right track and all of that. So I just knew that if I had kids and they wanted to do that, I wasn't going to push it on them. But it's what they wanted to do. Then I was going to do everything I could to support them and make sure that they had the best opportunity to achieve their goals. And so that's why we did it. Everything as a family, all. You know, all of us did it together. Did you think about joining the service as well? No, no sir. No? Uh, Not at all. <laughs> no? <laughs> I said uh, they served enough time. Both of them combined served enough time for me. And then uh, <laughs> our older brother is also in the Air Force. So I was like, yeah, that's it's good enough for me. <laughs> you guys already hit the quota for the family, right? Yeah, like, yes, check, sir. Right? <laughs> yeah, check, yeah. As a military child, you would make a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. And <laughs> some of the sacrifices that you have to make, it makes you not want to serve because as a child, your mom and dad are always gone, or there's things that they cannot do with you. And then when they have to go for a long period of time, and you have to go with, live with somebody else, then it makes them not want to serve. Because it's a big, it was a huge, not only for us, but it's a huge sacrifice for them. It was a huge sacrifice. And the one rule I had is they couldn't quit. No, I don't care. Not You're not going to quit. <laughs> if you started, right. like you, you start something, you got to finish it. You, you ain't got to do it next year, right. but you got to finish this. Right. Yeah. That's the promise I made my uh, parents. Like once uh, I left, that I would come back and 
graduating. My mom, like she said, you start something in this family, you yeah. finish it. And I mean, I've scored touchdowns, I've done so many things, but it was like no other feeling walking across that stage, something no one can take from me. I so. really feel like it was better than like playing in the NFL, like that feeling. Really like you is. walked across the stage, you was like. You did? I, I, I unzipped <laughs> my thing and opened it up. Yeah, like, boom. It was pretty cool. I met your mother at a game two years ago. I'm sure you were sitting right one seat in front of uh, your parents. But you had a pretty big run, and then, and then your mom was like, that's my baby! <laughs> what was it like for you guys, kids, um, to, you know, to grow up in a military family? Uh, it was fun. You know, a lot of love, a lot of respect. Um, use your manners, be respectful, be on time. I loved using manners, but I never under, like, understood them. And then you start, you, you leave your parents, you get, outside, get away from your parents and you continue to use your manners and people start to compliment you and be like, your parents did such a great job and it, it makes you feel good. And it's like, okay, this is why they were doing that. You know, out of all the players that we've had here in, in over the course of the last 15 years, I said, Aaron is definitely the most uh, professional, the most kind, the most respectful player that's ever been in the restaurant and that stands for rookies and that stands for guys that have played for the team for 15 years. So I mean to this day people get wow people like people don't use manners the way you do and I was like that's all I know like <laughs> I don't have my coach coach LaFleur I still say yes sir to him he'd be like stop calling me sir and I'm like yes sir and he's like what did I just tell him like it, it's it's in me. Sometimes I think that people have a misconception when it comes to military um soldiers and how they raised their family. When I went, went to work, I picked up that bag and did what I had to do. And when I came home, I had to let that go right. and go be that mom. Right. We never shared our military experience with them because we didn't want to add extra pressure mm -hmm. or extra stress onto their life. So me and my husband would share that with ourselves. I remember writing my husband a letter and I told him, if I die, bury me in my dress clothes. I did not think I was gonna make it. It was times I thought in my head, just take off all your clothes and just run. Just run and then they might see you home. They can have this money, I don't care. Right. They can have, I'd rather have my family. Right, right, but in the, right. in the, you have to collect your thoughts and say, okay now, you gotta do this. This is, this is your job, you gotta do this. And you get numb and you, you do it. Right. And try to support your family as best as you can. And no one knows that you're going through this because you're just going through it in your head, right? If nope. you think about it, because like you have to put the, you know, some, the face, yeah, you put the face on, like, you know, but deep down inside, like, hey, I'm, you know. I'm hurting, yeah. Yeah. You don't know But my people fears. are looking up to you. And you, you can't. You know? And it's like, you have to like put your feelings on the side, right? Yeah. Worrying about her on the other end of the country because she was in a more dangerous part of the country than I was. So I worry about her and then worrying about my kids, and then the 180 plus soldiers I had. I can remember this one incident, this one Sunday. The camp that she was on at the time before they moved, she would volunteer to go work in the, in the PX just to kill time, you know, have something to do. And um, that Sunday, we usually normally get to talk on Sundays. And that Sunday, I didn't hear from her. She would always call me because I didn't know where to call her. And um, I didn't hear from her, so I started getting worried. And uh, communications came across that that P that same PX had gotten blown up. So now I'm in a state of panic. That later that evening, she called, and I was like, "Oh my God, thank you," because that day she decided not to volunteer that day. I think she went to church or somewhere, and I, I asked her. I said, "Well." You wasn't there, and she told me, I was like, that was nobody but God. That was nobody but God, because that's where she would normally be. And back home, you guys had no clue this was going on, you know? This is the right? first you time I'm hearing this. Go, going about, thank you for sharing the story, because that's, that's the real deal, you know, with, with service and like family, right? And trying to balance the two and try to make it all work, you know, at the same time, making sure that you guys have the support that you have. Do what is good for your soul. Do what is good for your soul. 
I mean, what is it like for you to be on the field and, and to have, like, you see your fan, you, you know what I mean? You see the guys, out the, like, what is it? Um, it? It does a lot for me. And then, like you said, just knowing my parents served, like, and you hear a salute to service, it, it, it's a little added for me. The NFL is already showing them a sign of respect, but I feel like now it's time for me to even show a bigger sign, you know, with my, my play on the field and they're just honoring them. Do what is good for your soul. Um, these people are for, sometimes forgotten about. Uh, they're, they're really the true heroes. They're the reason that we're able to play football. We're, we're not. We're not even have, worrying about what what else is going on. We're about, worried about what play we're running this week or who we're playing against. When and that, that's the little things in life. When they're worried about if we're coming home, if we're going to see our child again, if this who's taking care of my child, what did he eat today? Things like that. So. Um, when you put it, when you think about it on a scale like that, they, they're, they're the true heroes, so. Do what is good for your soul. I mean, I'm not only representing myself, but the name on the back of my jersey is, I get from them. And what do they do? They serve this country and they served it to the highest of, uh, their ability and so that's the only way I feel like I can go out and repay them in a way it's, n it's never gonna make up for what they did but whenever you have a bad day you're still living greater than somebody is on their worst day you know and so you, you it, it teaches you not to take things for granted and uh, be where your feet are be take every moment in and just enjoy enjoy life <laughs> I'm Aaron Jones Green Bay Packers running back and this is salute to service through my eyes